Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I have the story for you. I'm talking a A-plus revenge story. All about a guy who was all set to retire. He worked in the railroad business, did very well from a self-management position, great benefits, uh, high income, the whole nine yards. All set to retire, enjoy the life, and found out right before about to retire, the wife's having an affair. And let me tell you, this guy goes full-blown Cobra Kai, no mercy, scorched earth. Revenge, revenge of the Sith. This will make Emperor Palpatine have his easy, e an evil smile here. All because she couldn't handle not getting much attention and validation, that type of thing. And let me tell you, you guys should all take notes here if you're married and uh, it comes to this. That'd be a great one to go over here, purely, certainly for the entertainment factor, but also to remember, guys, yeah, it gets to this point, you can't show any mercy because they won't show it towards you. And this guy does all these things that are A, hilarious, and B, ingenious to make sure he walks away from this as well. And also, well, let's just say things don't go well for her. And I might add, as you're going to see, she has the opportunity to walk away from a decent settlement from this marriage, but she screws the whole thing up, and, well, you'll see about that. He says, uh, Dear SSM, I've been following your channel for a while now. A short while back, I had breakfast with a couple of co-workers, and I thought I would share the story that I heard. I think you and your viewers will definitely enjoy it. It's a great revenge is a dish best served gold, cold type of story. Well, we all love those types of stories. Uh, for context, I'm an engineer with a Class 1 railroad. I've been working for this company for close to 20 years. It is a demanding job with no set days off, no schedule, and a lot of time away from our families. The job itself is not that difficult, but the dynamics of the schedule can be a killer. <clears throat> when I get to my home terminal and tie up from my duty, tour of duty, I go to the bottom of the queue of other engineers who work on the pool that I do. I get a mandatory 10 hours of undisturbed rest, and then I'm subject to being called for work. Every time an engineer is called on duty, I move up in the queue. When I first out and rested, or as you put it, OK status, or OK for work, the next train to come into my terminal is mine, and I'll be called for it and have to report for in 90 minutes. It could be at 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. when I am on duty. It varies every day. A conductor and I take the train to the next terminal where we will trade out and another crew who will take it and the cycle repeats until the train reaches its destination. Okay, so we're getting some background here of this guy's life as well as the guy he's talking about here. Definitely definitely a crazy schedule. At the, away from, uh, at the away from home terminal, I go to the bottom of the queue and head to the hotel where the railroad puts us up and I get my 10 hours of rest and wait to be first out and called to take the train back home. I may have to get my rest during the middle of the day or at night. It just depends on when I get off duty and what and what trains are running. It's a great career, but it's not for everyone. The better description is it's not a career, it's a lifestyle. Dude, I had no idea. <clears throat> I learned so much from you guys. Tell me about your lives and careers and all that. We are paid very well for the job that we do, mainly because of the chaotic work-life balance. Then he goes on and on about retirement and stuff like that, but that's not important for the story, but... I'll continue here. He says, uh, so the other morning, another railroader and I were went to dinner for breakfast, w went into a diner for breakfast. When we walked in, I saw another guy that we worked with, but did not recognize the guy sitting with him. We were invited to sit down, and when I took a good look at him, I recognized he was an engineer that I'd worked with 20 years ago when I hired out as a conductor. I will call him Bob. He was passing through town, so he dropped in to get some food and visit with an old co-worker. Bob hired out several several years before I did. About two years into my career, Bob drank the Kool-Aid and went into management. The lifestyle was tough on his family, so he took his career that direction to make a more consistent life for him and his family. So he was doing what he uh, thought was best for his family, not necessarily what he wanted to do. While we drank coffee and ate uh, chicken fried steak and eggs, Bob shared what had happened since becoming a manager. There were a couple of guys he kept in contact with, but most of them have since retired. He started as a terminal manager in another state, eventually worked his way to senior terminal manager, then to a director position. He then went to safety department, and when he retired, he was a general director. Now, Bob never said exactly what he made, but I suspect it was somewhere in the $250,000 a year range. Sweet. His annual bonus was probably equal to his salary, with half being in cash and the other half in retention stock. Holy shit. 
half a million bucks a year one way or another. That's fantastic. And as we're going to get into the story, we're going to see who that still wasn't good enough for. A couple of years before he retired is when his life changed. His son and daughter both graduated from high school and attending universities. He was busy with work, and about half the month was spent traveling across the system. Sometimes he would book a flight for his wife to come join him, but other times it was not practical due to the reason for the traveler or what his schedule events were. They owned their house and had purchased a 38 diesel pushover to travel the state after he retired. A pusher, not pushover. Life was good. His daughter was engaged, his son was close to graduating from college, and it would just be him and his wife. He was really looking forward to traveling with her. They talked about it for years. They discussed selling the house and purchasing something smaller for a home base, but, not this, but had not yet decided on where they were going to settle down. They did not hate where they lived, but the winters were a bit colder, and he was not too keen on spending retirement clearing snow from the driveway and sidewalks. He envisioned someplace warmer. Well, come to Florida. Everybody else is coming here. Yep, I got tired of all the fucking snow and ice and Massachusetts taxes and Massachusetts politics, and I can go on and on. Well, I came down here, and moving here was one of the best decisions of my life. The all-too-common had taken place. Loving wife of 31 years started acting different, spending excessive time in the bathroom with her phone, texting late at night, phone calls that were quickly ended when he walked into the room. There was also less than normal affection. I don't know what normal was. He never defined it. Classic sign, guys. You've heard this all the time. Those of you who watch me all the time, you ought to have this down like you're a fucking Jedi Master in this shit, seeing all the signs. So in case it happens to you, you know. Soon she was involved in projects where she would leave in the afternoon and could not be reached. Uh-uh. She needs to always be reached. I'm sure her husband, in spite of his crazy busy career, could always be reached relatively quickly. Uh, I forgot my phone in the car. My battery died. I was busy. Couldn't stop to pick up the phone. All the usual BS excuses. This went on for a couple months. He was in the West to roll out a new safety initiative and over four days only spoke to her once on the phone and got two text replies. That's it. That's all he got. He decided that he, when he got a, when he got in, he was going to confront his wife and find out what was going on. He would be coming home a day early, so he had sent a text to his wife when he be get uh <clears throat> when he got up stating that he'd be home around 6 p.m. so long as there was no flight issues or delays. In the text he said that all he wanted was to come home, have a nice home, cook dinner, and spend the evening with his wife. He never got a reply. <clears throat> Well, actions communicate everything, guys. When he got home a bit after 6 p.m., he was welcomed by a dark, cold home. Nobody was there. No reply still. He tried to call straight to voicemail. He sent a couple more texts that went unanswered. Finally, just before 11 p.m., his wife came home, looking surprised to see him. Surprised? He's been calling and texting her all this freaking time. What do you mean surprised? She told him, I thought you weren't coming home until Saturday. He told her if she had answered the phone or read his text, she would have known. She offered up a half-hearted apology and asked about his trip as she set down her purse and walked into the kitchen. He ignored her question and just asked, who is he? Bob said she stopped dead in her tracks, paused for a second, and then asked, who is who? Get the fuck out of here. She knows goddamn well what he's talking about here. He said he had stepped between her and her purse and simply told her not insult his intelligence by playing dumb. She gave a nervous laugh and told him she didn't know what he was talking about. He said he, tur he, said he, uh, he turned, opened her purse, and started to dig through it. She asked what was he doing. He pulled out her phone and held it up. Here we go. Here we go with the fireworks. Bob told us what he did. The look on her face was pure panic. He had never looked at her phone before, never asked for it, never borrowed it, never even used it. He knew what the password was supposed to be, and to his surprise, it unlocked when he entered it. He said she tried to take it away from him, plead with him to give it back to her, begged, offered to do anything. Bob ignored her. So obviously something's going on here. She's begging him to take it back, wrestling him for the phone. I'll do anything. Duh. Bob ignored her. She changed it up and got mad. Told him he had no right. Blah, 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 blah. All while trying to take the phone from him. 
She then went for the Hail Mary and told him that if he didn't give her her phone, she was going to divorce him. Bitch, we're getting divorced anyway because obviously something's going on. He had suspected his marriage would be over tonight, so he just looked at her and said, Deal, shake on it. <laughs> this was a sitcom. That'd be like the title of this episode. <laughs> Deal, shake on it. And extended his hand. He said she was in shock at how quickly things went south for her. She tried to be mad, but eventually turned into tears, and she broke down sobbing right there on the kitchen floor. Hobag Handbook Chapter 2, Bring on the Waterworks. Uh, Bob said that uh, she had been having an affair for about six months. Some guy who hit on her at the grocery store. Yeah, shopping for groceries isn't safe anymore for a relationship. The divorce turned ugly, her demanding the world. They were in a no-fault state, and she it gets at least half. Yeah, once she got to the lawyer, all of a sudden the crying went carrying on stopped. So all the, I think he said that he was married to this chick for 30 freaking years. Kids are out of the house, college graduated, one's about to get married, they're planning the retirement, travel around the country, sing it in the RV or whatever they're going to buy, and here we go. She gets a little attention and validation and goes bananas. The attention, the craving, the drug-like effect of the attention and validation never stops. That's why I tell you guys, you young guys, if your girlfriend is addicted to social media and she has to post pictures of herself, she's disqualified. Because she's never going to stop. That's what it's about. Uh, Saturday and Sunday were ugly. Many words were said. Accusations were made. She said Bob was neglecting her needs. If he had been more attentive, this never would have happened. Yeah, sure. Then she'd be complaining. So let's just say he had a job that he was home more often. Then she'd be complaining that he didn't make enough fucking money. This guy's pulling in like half a million dollars a year. And she's bitching and complaining. She ought to be fucking walking around singing zippity doo dah and carrying on and being happy as can be. But no. She attempted to gaslight and turn this all into Bob's fault. Well, of course, never her fault. Not once did she apologize for what she had done. She said they could work on the marriage, go to counseling, all the normal stuff. Uh, Bob, Bob said he asked her, what, what's there to counsel? You're a cheating whore, and in my eyes, you always will be. Well, good for Bob. Good for Bob for not falling for this bullshit. All right, she is a cheating W-H-O-R-E. They told her she disgusted him and he'll be filing for a divorce. She said she would sue him for everything that he had and would get the fiercest lawyer she could find. Oh, yeah? Go for it. That Monday, he called his boss. Briefly explained what was going on and said he would be burning some vacation days. He understood and told him to call if he needed anything. He asked for the name of a good divorce attorney. He said he'd get back to him, and he did. Bob's boss texted him a list of 15 lawyers, people he knew that, that he had used. Bob told his wife she needed to leave, but she refused. He wasn't going to leave his house because she cheated. Bob decided to play hardball. He was going to see that she got as little as possible, but he knew he would have to have to pay something. He moved all but $2,000 out of the joint account. He canceled all the credit cards and called the kids to tell them what was happening. His son sided with him, was mad at his mom, and wouldn't talk to her. The daughter wanted to stay out of it, didn't want to pick sides. He spent Monday and Tuesday phoning as many lawyers as he could, and for the rest of the week, he had a dozen or more free consultations. The best ones first. He decided to have some fun as well. It was summertime, and the city had been rather humid in the 90-plus degree days. He disabled the thermostats in the house. He also turned the water heater down to the lowest setting. Bob would just shower at the gym each morning. The one that made me laugh, he removed all the doorknobs to the interior doors. <laughs> Hot and humid summer, effing up the air conditioner, you know, disabling the thermostats. Turning the water down in the, in the, in the hot water here so she can't take a hot shower. Taking away the, the knobs in the doors. Making a living hell so she can't live. Because she doesn't know how to deal with these things. And talking to as many lawyers as he can. Because therefore, they can't work with her. He then removed the interior doors. Put them in her parking spot in the garage. And they ran a steel security cable through the door knob holes. And padlocked them so they couldn't be rehung without some extra effort. <laughs> he also <coughs> excuse me. 
He also quit talking to her. She would talk to him and he would walk away. If she cornered him, he would let her talk. And when she was done, he'd say nothing, make no gestures or show any emotion and walk away. She was going insane. She would yell at him and then the next minute be crying, sobbing mess, begging him to please talk to her, say anything. The most powerful thing you can do, guys, is walk away or when you can't walk away, don't engage. Drives them fucking great because they want the drama. Uh, yell at her, whatever, but it was clear she didn't want to lose him. So after much begging, he finally did talk to her. <clears throat> she had finished apologizing was sobbing uncontrollably. She was begging for another chance. After six months of cheating on me and effing some other guy and blaming me for everything? No. He looked at her and said, I'm thirsty, I'm going to get some water. He then walked away. He, he said that she let out a scream in frustration and screamed that he was an a-hole. And the affair partner was better in bed than Bob could ever dream of being. Whatever happened wanted to get back with me. He said when she responded that the way she did, it made him grin ear to ear. I picture this Mr. Grinch grin. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know, Mr. Grinch, that, that, that smile when it goes all the way up here. <clears throat> Bob, tuned, Bob told his soon-to-be ex-wife that he would babble her to death. Spend every dime he had if it meant she wouldn't get it. He would burn the house down and drive the motor coach off a cliff. He did not care at this point. He'd been 100% faithful and she had pissed all those years away. He would go broke and live in a van before she got half of everything that they had. When he was done, the only half left for her would be a half of the van that he'd be living in. He told her, you can have, you can have the van, I'll keep the brakes. <laughs> Guys, we're just getting started here. Now, the battle was on. Bob hired a female attorney, a real badass. She went after his ex with both barrels loaded for, for a bear. Bob's ex was unable to hire a bulldog lawyer because of Bob's actions. He made enough contacts with attorneys to limit who she could hire locally. He wasn't horrible or incompetent, just a, just not... Uh, he wasn't horrible and incompetent, just not a top-tier divorce attorney. Okay, meaning the lawyer she finally hired. She could have traveled 60 miles to a neighboring city, but Bob said that she was either too dumb to think of it or too lazy to do it. She yelled at him after three different attorneys that they had already spoken with, Bob, and could not represent her. It worked out in his favor. And his attorney's recommendation, he made her a lucrative offer. A quick divorce would ensue. Uh, we sell the, the house, you keep all the proceeds, and she would get another $150,000 in cash in a one-time payout. No 401k money, no pension money, no alimony. Otherwise, he would spend it all on the lawyers. Their house was paid for and was valued at in the high 600s to the low 700s. She would walk away with close to 850 grand in cash and prizes. He would always uh, foot her lawyer bill. He would also foot her lawyer bill, but that was a small potatoes compared to the payout. She would also have her portion of the railroad retirement, which would be several thousand dollars a month once he retired and she turned 60. Yes, even divorced, the ex-wife will still get tier two retirement. Well, how effed up is that? But okay, so he's making her this big offer. Make fast divorce, blah, blah, blah. And you would think, gee whiz, you'd think with her getting equivalent about 850 grand, give or take, and eventually getting a couple grand a month in retirement, because obviously they're getting close to 60 years old, she could be comfortable and all that, perhaps. But, and it doesn't mention anything about her ever working or anything like that and getting Social Security benefits and all that. So anyway, she should have been okay. Well, let's see, let, let you all speculate how this goes, because, well, you, you know... Women and money are not always the best combination. Well, it turns out she saw the dollar signs, and since she was impulsive, impatient, and now as it turned out greedy, she agreed against her lawyer's advice. What's that piece of advice you're uh, always giving about lawyers? It seemed to slip her mind. The piece of advice I always give guys is always listen to your lawyer. But she did not. So they split. She took the money and bought a high-end condo in a renovated warehouse. And I'm sure that cost her a fortune. High-end probably cost her a fortune. Probably very high HOA, HOA fees, that type of things. And hell, if she was down south in Florida, I can imagine her insurance cost or the high HOA fees. She took the money and bought a high-end condo. She bought a new car for herself and the affair, and the affair partner. 
took him on trips and a bunch of other stuff. So she is just going through this money. Bought a new car. <clears throat> Lord knows what the car was. And we all know you buy a brand new car off the lot. It's immediately going to depreciate. And so that's the you and the viewers are perceptive. So you probably know what happened after the last paragraph. Turns out Loverboy had a couple other gals he was seeing besides Bob's ex. And he let Bob's ex spend all her money on him. It was gone in a couple of years. 850 grand gone in a couple of years. She even took a uh, HELOC on the paid for condo. So not only was the money gone, she was now making payments on the once paid for condo. When the money dried up, Loverboy ghosted her and she was left with nothing but hurt feelings, credit card debt, and a bank account balance with no commas. <laughs> She did this to herself. Had a great marriage, great guy, all these things. Family, kids. She did this to herself. Also for some attention and validation. Completely screwed it all up. Now, given that her, financially, her life has gone to hell in a handbasket and lover boy's gone, can you all guess what's going to happen next? It says, uh, take a guess what happened next. Insert the final Jeopardy theme. I'm sure you guessed it. Bob's phone rang one day. Huh, who could be on the phone? Maybe it's one of those recordings of Joe Biden say, give me a buck, because we're going to need all the help we can in November. <laughs> nope, wasn't Joe Biden. It was his ex telling him she's so sorry. What a mistake she made, and she missed him so much. Can we meet for lunch? I would really love to see you again. <laughs> Bob said he told her he didn't associate with cheating W-H-O-R-E-S and hung up on her. Blocked her phone number two. <laughs> Every time when things go bad, they always come back. And her perception of her husband is just that he's this nice guy that will take her back. Now this did not sell, sit well with her. She went to her daughter for sympathy, which she got. The daughter spoke with Bob later about her mom's plight and said he needed to do something for her. Uh, bullshit. She can move in with you. He lovingly explained to his daughter that there are consequences for actions. Her mom made the choice to destroy their marriage, so she is no longer his responsibility. Turns out the daughter, who did not want to get involved, was now siding with mom. Of course, ex-wife managed to drive a wedge between Bob and his daughter, and of course, that was his daughter's choice too. So the ex-wife is doing whatever she can to get even. And she'll be mooching off the daughter. And the daughter's dumb enough to go for this. Again, the daughter, in her mind, probably is thinking, you know what? Regardless of how awful she was and how she pissed away all the money, because she's crying and is so sorry that this guy should forgive her and take her back or give her more money or something stupid like that. Nope. The daughter is a grown-ass woman, and now she's making her bed and she can lie in it. Now, Bob said that he had one last parting sh sh uh, shot at his ex. I said he retired from the railroad, but that is not exactly accurate. At 59 years old and a half, Bob went in one day and resigned. The next day, he went to a big box home improvement store and applied for a job. He got hired, worked exactly one day, and then went in and quit. That was over two and a half years ago. So why did Bob do that? Well, if a person voluntarily separates from the railroad, as in does not retire, but quits, and then proceeds to work one day in a non-railroad retirement job after, after doing so, the employee cannot collect railroad retirement until age 62. And all of their tier two retirement is uh, forfeited. <laughs> Which means Bob's ex-wife, who at 60 years old, could start getting, I think, a couple grand a month or whatever the hell it is. Now she has to wait a few more years because Bob did that. And Bob's got plenty of dough, so he doesn't need it. The ex-wife will collect exactly zero dollars every month for uh, railroad retirement until the day she dies. Oh, okay. I thought she would have to wait till 62. So she's not getting railroad retirement? Uh, she'll be eligible for Social Security when she hits 65 or 67 or 70 or whatever it's up to these days. Not quite the several thousand per month she was banking on. That is hilarious. As a manager, Bob was vested in the pension, so it covered him until he hit 62. His ex, she got to the point where she couldn't afford the condo and had to sell it. Shocker. She walked away with some cash, but nothing like what she had. She is in a one-bedroom apartment and working for a major nationwide retail chain for $15 an hour. 
Bob took a bit of financial hit. He could have been collecting, I'm guessing, seven to eight grand a month from age 60 until 62 from the railroad retirement. Ex-wife would have been 49% of that number. Rough math, 150 to 170 grand in lost retirement pay to completely screw his ex-wife. Nah, he didn't screw her. He railroaded her. No pun intended. Or, or no, pun intended. As I said, during those couple of years, he collected his pension, the more than provided for his needs. With the pension, railroad retirement, and 401k, and Roth IRA, uh, I believe our friend Bob is doing just fine. Ex-wife, not so much. Holy shit. Bob is a fucking badass. Please tell Bob about my channel. Bob is traveling the States in his motorhome. He tows a side-by-side -side and a Harley on a trailer behind it. Why am I not surprised he's a Harley guy? He's going to spend his golden years traveling. He's in excellent shape, working out, watching his diet, and enjoying being retired. Unfortunately, his relationship is strained with his daughter because he won't set up and take care of her. Of her. Dad, she's my mom. You can afford it, as Bob put it. All that bullshit. His son doesn't share his sister's opinion and has told his mom she ruined the family. And while he had already moved out, he says she cheated not only on my dad, but on him and the sister as well. Thank you. At least the son has some brains. Bob's son was engaged, but after seeing what happened to his dad, he says he's not so sure about the whole marriage thing anymore. He sees his future and his potential and is worried about how to protect it. When he spoke to his fiance about a prenup, sparks flew and words were said. Bob says his son likely dodged a bullet. Holy crap, this whole situation saved the son. There's a reason that this son's now former fiance had a meltdown about prenup and all that. Ugh. So there you have it. Another woman seduced by excitement and danger. Unwilling to be content with a boring, routine life with a good provider who has built a future for them. A cautionary tale to any railroad... Rail... Rail... God damn it. Railroad wives out there. Railroad husbands too. There are a few of them. And another tool in the toolbox for any of my railroad brothers grinding out, living it day after day. Hope you enjoyed this little story, SSM. Blessings to all the bros out there before 304s. Holy crap. That was a hell of a story. I mean, I'm sorry that happened to your, to Bob. I know that's his code name. But god damn, Bob's a badass. Handled like a boss. And it's amazing to me. She, he quick divorce. Gave her like $850,000 after the sale of the home. All those other things. <clears throat> Pissed it all away on her lover boy. I think it's hilarious. And of course, she's back. Balling and carrying on. And I'm so sorry. Want you back. But you don't want me back, bitch. You want the lifestyle back. The same lifestyle you destroyed because you were bored. And weren't getting the butterflies and the attention and validation. And this guy busted his tail. And I'm sure with this guy, Bob, traveling around, that he had to do all the time for his job. I'm sure he's encountered many women over the years. And given that he's a manager in a leadership role, and obviously he's a tough guy, keeps in shape, Harley guy, I'm sure he had plenty of opportunities <clears throat> to cheat, have affairs, and didn't. And she pulls this crap. And the question I have is, or more, not less of a question, but what I'm thinking is, it's very likely she waited all these years to suddenly have an affair before you retire. I'm willing to bet you there's probably a lot of other BS going on behind the scenes for years. They just never do it. And who knows? Maybe, maybe that daughter of his isn't his kid. I mean, you have to wonder. Probably at this stage, he probably doesn't even want to know. But really, you know, maybe that's why. Because somebody else is, maybe maybe the lover boy the mom was cheating with was the guy from the past. And that's her old dad. I don't know. But we can all speculate. Nothing is cra too crazy for this channel, what can happen when it comes to people. So anyhow, great storm of man. I appreciate you sending that in. And uh, if you ever talk to Bob, give him a shout out. Send him this channel. And uh, his son can watch it too. All right, guys, that was it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And guys, you got a great story you got to share, whether it's your own personal story or something that a friend or family member went through and survived and learned something, send it send it over my way, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just uh, make sure you write out well, make it easier for me to understand, and I'll definitely cover it when I get the chance. And if you like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.